Hey guys, I'm George Makris. And I'm Aaron Neal. And we're going to talk to you guys a little bit about the RTX 40 series cards and the power requirements you guys might need to run that. We have seen a lot of information and misinformation out there and we wanted to set the record straight so those of you guys who are planning to run an RTX 40 series card have 100% confidence that your power supply is able to do that. So before we go too far, let's get the record straight. ATX 3.0 is what? ATX 3.0 is the new Intel spec that was ratified earlier this year. Now, it incorporated a lot of things that had already been done before, including the PCIe SIG 5.0 spec. So this is for power supplies? For power supplies specifically. So with ATX 3.0 taking, taking in all of the PCIe SIG 5.0 specifications, there's a lot of power delivery that's in the ATX new ATX 3.0 so spec. So PCIe Express 5.0 is, from a power delivery perspective, is part of the ATX 3.0 spec? Yes. Okay. And they can live separately because you can actually have an ATX 3.0 power supply without a 12VH PWR cable. 12VH PWR is the new connector that NVIDIA is using on the 40 series cards, right? Yes. And it can do 600 watts? Yeah. So It's a single connector that can do 600 watts. And NVIDIA used a version of that on the 3090 Ti FE cards because it just really saved real estate. You could either do three eight pin PCIe's or one smaller connector. And that's really why they used that specification early, um, even though it's not a PCIe 5.0 card. So the PCIe 5.0, the 12VH, 12 VHPWR connector is part of the PCI Express 5.0 spec, but there's more to the PCI Express 5.0 spec than just that connector. Yes, because there's they have power excursions and timings and things like that that are part of an overall spec um, th for things that aren't even GPUs because uh, there are some stuff that memory, sub-storage, you know, there, there are PCIe 5.0 applications outside of a GPU. Okay, so that's good to know because that means I don't need an ATX 3.0 power supply mm -hmm. or a PCIe 5.0 power supply to run a 40 series card. No, you don't. And specifically on the 40 series, for the 4090 and the 4080s that they launched, um, you know, everyone was concerned that there would be larger power spikes. Um, but actually, they're on the same or less than the 30 series. Um, so you don't have these massive power spikes. You don't specifically need a PCIe 5.0 power supply. Uh, and you certainly don't need an ATX 3.0 power supply. Uh, most of the power supplies out there on the market today, um, they already meet the majority of the new spec. There are a couple of new things that are involved, um, you know, power cycling for low power sleep states. Right. Um, and the, so that is something that's newer, but most people were already testing for this anyway. The motherboard guys have been testing for this for a long time. And we have. And we have. Um, and that's why Intel put it into the ATX 3.0 So spec. if I have an 850 watt RMX or HX power supply, I should be able to run a 4090. You will be able to run a 4090, no problems. Okay, so I don't need, if I'm running a 3090 today, or a 3080 Ti or something like that, I should be fine running the 40 series equivalent of that card because the power delivery is the same. Absolutely. Okay, so now let's talk real quick about the connectors. We talked the 12 volt, high, very high power connector. We also have eight pins, which we've been using for generations, right? Yes. Um, and we know that the official spec on an eight pin is 150 watts, right? So that's the, the input of the card side. So on the power supply side, what we supply out to the graphics card, you know, our PCIe connectors and most PCIe connectors out there, um, they have the ability to run more than that. They can actually do up to 280 watts. Now, if you only had three pins and you use like 5% degradation, like we do, because it's not always at 12 volts, sometimes it's at 11.7, it's 210 watts basically on the bottom side, right. which is why that three to one adapter works on both the 3090 Ti and the 40 series cards that ship with every card out there. So yeah, so every single card that you can buy, 40 series, 4080, 4090, whatever, is gonna have that adapter in the box. They're putting that adapter in the box because they know it works. Yes. They're not putting it there going, well, best of luck. It's like <laughs> they're doing it because they know this will work fine. If yes. you have a power supply that has the eight pin and doesn't have the 12 pin, you're gonna be fine with this. Absolutely. And so a lot of them are the three to one or four to one um, to give extra overclocking headroom if people you know, wanna turn up the wick on their GPU. Okay, so let's get to the summation of this. What type of power supply do I need for a 4090? So, NVIDIA is recommending an 850 watt power supply. And so we recommend the same thing along with, you know, any of our 850 and up will be able to enough to power that card. 
And you know, there are reasons to get a little bit more. You know, if you are running the high-end Intel CPU and you are overclocking and you have a lot of RGB, which actually draws a lot of other power. So, you know, when you are gaming or you're doing content creation, you're using one thing or the other. And if you're using both at the same time, plus all the RGB, you know, you can get up to, you know, 500, 600 watts use case if you're at the very high end. So that's a good point because the new AMD uh, CPUs that came out, they have very high TDP. So they're 170 watt minimum TDP yeah. with Bursa 230. If you pair that with the 600 watt graphics card, you're over 800 watts right there. So if you are running a 7950 Ryzen 7000 series and an NVIDIA 4090, maybe bump to 1000 watts. Absolutely. Uh, so that's, it's a matter of the combination of what you're running. Now that being said, most people are not running, you know, 16 core monster processors or thread rippers or yes. things like that. So they're running, you know, most of these guys are running the standard 5800s and things like that. So I think you should be okay there. I personally, I would recommend following the Intel, NVIDIA and AMD specs for the power supplies that they put out there. We have done that ourselves and had no problems at all. Um, the 850 for the 4090 is the sweet spot. Um, if you do want to buy a little bit better, go to 1,000, but you don't need to go buy a 1,500 watt or 1,600 no. watt power supply. We'd love it if you did. If you went out and bought our you know, HX 1500i or something like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. They're in stock. Yeah, go buy a couple, <laughs> but, uh, but realistically, you don't need it. Um, so I want to be 100% transparent. All of our power supplies today, no problem at all with RTX 40 series. The 8-pin connectors that work off our power supplies will power the, the adapter, or you can plug it into any card that happens to have the standard 8 pins. And 750 for the 4080s, 850 for the 4090s. That's what we recommend. And if you want to clean up your build, because that adapter will work, um, absolutely. But I mean, I like the aesthetic yeah. of having a little bit cleaner build. We actually have a 12VH PWR cable um, that actually goes directly from the power supply into the graphics card. It actually makes that you don't have to use the adapter that comes in the box, and it's actually a single cable solution. Now, what it does is at the other end, it plugs into two eight pins directly on the power supply. And a lot of people ask, well, you're using two connectors, but the adapter uses three or four. How is that possible? Well, the PCI connector that's on the end of our cable going out is rated for a certain load for that pin and that connector. Um, on our PTSU, on the DC side, those connectors and those pins are also rated for a higher level. We can actually put out, you know, more than 300 watts through a single connector, and we are actually to the point where those two can support, at, even if we subtract a little bit for voltage variation, 702 watts out of two connectors. So we know what we built our power supplies to do. We know the gauge of cables, we know we know the, the material inside the power supply, we know the output capacity, we know the, the connectors we're buying specifically and the pins and all that stuff. And we overspec because we wanna be you know well above the minimum requirement. So do not try and use this cable on somebody else's power supply. We don't yes. know what they've done on their side. If you buy the adapter cable from us that goes from an eight pin or dual eight pins to a 12 VHWPR, then use it on a Corsair power supply. Please do not plug that into somebody else's power supply. <laughs> no. Just a disclaimer. <laughs> I cannot be responsible for what other guys have done with their power supplies. We know ours. We know what we've done. We know we've done it right. I don't know what everybody else has done. Absolutely. But we do have that cable available and it is a much cleaner solution and it does provide more than enough power for a 4090, the 4080s. Um, it will provide that 600 watts, no problem. So 4080, we're at 750 watt. 4090, we're at 850 watt. That's the type of power requirements we have. These cards obviously do still run hot. I mean, they put that giant heat sink on them, right? So there's obviously some heat to be uh, taken care of there. What are we doing about that? So uh, a lot of our HydroX coolers, we'll have separate blocks available uh, later on in this year. Um, our cases, obviously the 4000D airflow, 5000D airflow, provide ample room for the card to fit in and to cool it properly. So you can put this in a 4000 series case. I would not recommend to put it in anything but the airflow case. This much heat, you really want the airflow to go yeah. through. So I would put it in the airflow case. 5000D, 7000D airflow, great cases for that. I actually really like the idea of doing a Hydro X build with this uh, because you save all the space. Four slots to two. <laughs> yeah, it, the Hydro X uh, blocks look fantastic. So if you're gonna do a custom liquid cooled build, we will have a block available for that later on. Uh, but you guys will be able to cool that card really, really well and keep the temperatures down. The important thing about keeping temperatures down means that you will not throttle the speed. The, the, the clock speed will never go down because of heat if you have it cooled really well. So custom cooling takes care of that. So that's something I highly recommend for those of you guys who are even modestly interested in it, look into it heavily, especially with this generation with CPUs and GPUs getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Great time to look at custom cooling and HydroX has all the coolest stuff. So no, no pun intended, obviously. So. There's a dad joke for you there. All right, so 
That's the 40 series for you guys. So your current power supply will probably work. If you have a 30 series card and you got a 750, you can run an 80 series. If you got a 850, you can run a 90 series. If you want to custom cool it, go get a Hydro X block coming out later this year. You guys should be ready, good to go. Corsair's got you covered. Thanks for watching. Happy gaming. Thank you very much.